Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. It's February, so our theme is love, but the added challenge is to incorporate some chocolate elements into the card. For my card, I'll be showing how to use the Rockin' Rectangle pop-up die set to create a box of chocolates where the lid lifts up and out of the way as you open the card. And you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. The rock and rectangle die set includes nine individual dies, and before I get started with die cutting, I first need to make a card. I started with a piece of cardstock, six and a half inches by five inches, and scored it at one and a half inches from the left edge. I'm working on a five by five finished card, so my pattern paper is four and three quarters square. I grabbed the long, skinny, wavy border from the Border Blends Argyle set, and I'm going to use that to cut a scalloped edge along my flap. Now, in order to use this border die as an edge die, I just need to have the end of the flap come up a little bit into the die, so I'm really just focusing on the one edge. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I am using a Sizzix Big Shot. So, just a quick and easy way to get a decorative scalloped edge to that flap. I want to add a clear front to my card, so I've cut a piece of heavyweight plastic to four and seven eighths on the width by five inches on the height, and then that usually comes with blue coating on both sides, so I'll remove that coating. And then I just want to line that up with the right edge of my card. That's why I cut the width just a little bit shorter so that it wouldn't bunch in the fold. Then I'll use a couple strips of red liner tacky tape in the flap and I'll stay a little bit away from all of the edges. And then I line up that piece of plastic with the right hand side of the card and the top and the bottom, hold it in place, and then press my flap to it. Okay, so now I have my card, but of course you can see that adhesive through the plastic. So to make that look a little nicer, I will add a little piece of the same pattern paper just over the top of the plastic to cover up that adhesive. Okay, awesome! Now I have my 5x5 card and it's ready for a pop-up. I'll cut the two pieces I need for the rock and rectangle pop-up out of that same brown cardstock. I need that long arm piece, and if your die is new, the little slots may still have paper in them, so just pop those out. And then the folds on these are three, so there's one next to the tapered tab. That should be a mountain fold. You fold to the back. The next one is a valley fold. You fold toward yourself, and then the final one is another mountain fold. I'll set this piece aside and work on the folding of the other piece. So this one creates the under supports, and they are connected together, and they also have these little wings that fold in, and when you glue those wings down, the supports underneath the pop-up become double thick and very strong. So the first step is just to glue down the flaps with a strong adhesive. I'm using my favorite, which is the Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in the Fine Tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website, but you could just as easily use a strong tape. So after adding my glue, I just fold over those flaps and press them until that glue sets up. If you're assembly lining and don't feel like holding them, you could also just use binder clips or paper clips to hold them while that glue sets up. Last week I was teaching with this die and the students called this piece a little pair of pants. Now, knowing that I have an international audience, I will say, or trousers. But up at the top of the legs there's a fold line and then down here next to the feet, next to each tab, there's a fold line and you can work those folds. So here's what's going to happen with our little trousers. He is going to sit on the ground and his feet are going to come up and through those slots on the other piece. Now, in order for that to happen, the shoes have to get a little smaller. So we need to fold in one side of the tab. It doesn't matter which side. It may depend on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, which feels more natural to you. You could even fold in both sides. It doesn't matter. You just need to get those feet small enough to fit through the slot on the big piece. So you'll have to hold that fold closed while you put it through the slot. Once it's through, then you can unfold the tab, and that will lock that foot through the slot. Same thing with the other one. So just hook in the side that you didn't fold, and then jam everything through, and then unfold it on the other side. So the feet are now locked in through the big piece. You can see those legs underneath. And then what we need to do is we need to glue down those feet to the piece so that they're not just sticking up in the air. They're actually glued down. 
Now, the easiest way to do that is actually to close up the big piece because that will flatten our pair of trousers. Now, one thing you want to do before you glue anything down is you want to make sure that they're straight. So there's a little wiggle room in there. Make sure that they're sticking out the end in a nice straight position. Then fold back that little foot or shoe, whatever you're thinking of it as, add some glue and press it down. Once that top shoe is attached, then you can open up the piece and that will give you access to the other shoe. And once again, just lift it up, add some glue, and then press it down. Once both those feet are glued down, now the piece is complete and it's ready for installing inside the card. Okay, step one for installing our pop-up inside the card is to work on the left side of the fold. So on the pop-up, we want to find this big tapered tab, add some adhesive, and then stick it down on the left side of the card so that the end of the tapered tab is right in the fold of the card. Notice where my adhesive is going. It's all over the tapered tab on top of the tab right on top because we're going to flip it over now and then the end of the tab is going to go right into the fold of the card and we're going to press that tab down. Now when I make videos I work from above the card but they're always oriented towards you. So you're looking at the card exactly like you would be seeing it. The left side of the fold is where that tapered tab is glued down. Okay, so the end of our trousers now is going to attach to the other side of the card. So we're gonna collapse down the piece so that we can see the end of our trousers, that other tab, and we want to add the glue on top of that. And then what we want to do is keep everything nice and flat while we carefully close this side of the card. If I was not working on clear plastic, I would just start mashing the top of the card until the glue set up, but I'm afraid of squishing glue out and onto my plastic. So I'm actually going to reach in and make sure that everything, it's in the flat position. I don't want to let it move while I do that, but if I reach in and give it a press, then I don't have to worry about squishing my glue onto my plastic. Now another option would have been just to put a post-it note on the inside of the plastic to protect it while I did that step. So the pop-up is now installed and it's installed correctly, but don't worry that you have to give it a little push. Until it gets the rectangle on top of the pop-up, it's not going to be heavy enough to slide itself closed, so you'll need to give it a little help. Now to add a little weight and strength to the pop-up, I'm going to use the small rectangle to cut a piece of brown cardstock to fit on that interior panel that will also cover up that tab that's been glued down. And do make sure you coat it with adhesive because, of course, that piece is not only for decoration but also for strength. And even after getting that piece on, there isn't enough weight on the pop-up yet to close on its own. So you'll still have to push it closed as you close the card. Now I'll work on my box of chocolates for my lower platform. And step one is I've nested the large rectangle with the large scalloped rectangle. So that way I get a nice frame as well as that pretty scalloped rectangle. And then I just repeated that so that I would have two of those frames to stack up together to be the sides of my box. Now I'm going to take out the scalloped rectangle and cut a big red rectangle as well as a big brown rectangle. And since that die is nice and big and open, I'll be able to cut through two layers at once. Okay, the red rectangle is going to be the base of my chocolate box and the little frames are going to be the box sides. So my first step is going to be to glue the two frames to each other, just to make them double thick. Next, I want to cut five small white rectangles, and I have chosen a very lightweight white cardstock so that I can actually fold it in half and cut two at a time. I'm going to do that three times until I get six rectangles. I only need five for the card. And in fact, one of the rectangles can be cut in half. The white rectangles are going to be the liners that hold the chocolate, and to make them look a little more realistic, I would like to crimp them. This is actually a plastic tube crimper. I've had it forever. I think they make them a little stronger now out of metal, so I'll see if I can find a link for the About section, or if you just have a paper crimper, that works as well. So I will crimp all of those white rectangles. And I'm just using tape runner in the center of each rectangle when I add it. And that way the corners can kind of lift up a little bit. It just looks a little more realistic that way. Once all my liners are on, then I can add some glue to add that thin frame around the perimeter. 
all of our pop-up die sets come with included decorator dies, and those decorator dies are universal. So these hearts, the large ones and the small ones out of the heart pivot panels die set will be perfect to make my heart-shaped chocolates. I cut 10 large hearts and 8 small ones out of brown cardstock. To make them glossy, I'm using clear embossing powder, a pair of tweezers, my Versamark watermark ink pad, and a heat tool. Step one is to press the heart down into the ink pad to coat it and then dip it into the clear embossing powder. Now I do see how messy my Versamark ink pad is. I have a newer one, but I couldn't find it, so I had to go dig out this old one. But it luckily had enough ink in it that it would hold the embossing powder. And then I just melt that powder using my heat tool. Then I glue my glossy heart to a plain heart so that it is double thick. And then I just repeat that process until I've made five large chocolate hearts and four small chocolate hearts. I will use four of the large hearts and all four of the smalls to fill up the chocolate box. And I had them be at different angles, kind of slightly crooked here and there so that they would look more realistic. Okay, I'm going to attach my chocolate box to the lower portion of the pop-up platform. So my adhesive all over that platform and then just set my chocolate box in there. And then probably the best way to attach it and make sure that it's permanent is to actually close up the card and give everything a good press. And even now we haven't added any weight to the upper platform, so it's not gonna close on its own. You'll still have to push it down. Next, I'll make the box lid. So I'm going to use one of the scalloped rectangles that I cut earlier. And to that, I am going to tie some ribbon onto it, some pretty crepe ribbon. And when I choose the location for my bow, I'm going to have it be not right in the center, but actually sort of in the upper left corner. Then I attach that finished scalloped rectangle to the large brown rectangle. Now to attach this inside the card, I want the adhesive only on the upper pop-up. And then I'm going to use the card itself to determine where to place the lid because I do not want the lid to slide past this edge right here or else it will become a catch point. So what I need to do is I need to put my lid on the upper platform and then close the card and then I can still slide it around because it's glue. I want to make sure that the top and the bottom are at the same location as my candy box below and that the left edge does not go past that edge of paper. Now what's nice about that is that then you can see the whole lid in the closed position and it will clear the entire candy box when it opens. You can see all of the candy. Now because I have a clear card front, I'm actually seeing a little bit of my mechanism sticking out in the closed position. And just to disguise that a little bit, I'll add my final chocolate heart inside the card, just overlapping that little bit of mechanism that's visible. That way it looks like an intentional decoration. And then of course when you open it, the box lid will come up and out and over the top of that heart. Back to my Border Blends Argyle set, and this time I'm blending two dies together so that I can get a cool little heart border that has press dots in it, and I'll cut that out of red. And that little heart border can go then on the front of the card. It's the same scallop that's at the top of the hearts that's on the edge of the flap, so by just offsetting it a little bit, it looks really cool. For a greeting, I have glued two love yous together from Word Set 9 Love, red on the bottom, white on the top, and just offset a little bit for a shadow. And that's just attached to the top of the box. I had considered adding a little personal message inside the candy box that would be revealed as you opened it, but in the end I decided just to add some rectangles and candy to the back of the card as a place to write my personal greeting. My finished card measures five by five when closed. That means that it fits perfectly in an A7 envelope for mailing. The ribbon bow makes it a little thicker though, so it probably would need that extra ounce stamp. If you think of this technique more generically, it really is just the lid of a box that's being lifted up and out of the way by the card, revealing some sort of surprise inside. So explore decorating this for any type of occasion or season. You'll find supply links and a link to the blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. 
You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.